Nick Cage is back and he's hunting buffalo, and we're talking about it right now. I was sent a screener for the new movie Butcher's Crossing, directed by Gabe Polsky. Uh, it's a brand new movie that I actually got sent a screener for uh, by the studio and the good folks over at Harpoon Productions. I want to thank them for hooking me up with the screener so that I could watch the movie early and talk to you guys about it. Um, also want to say that even though I got a screener, and that is super cool, by the way, it's the first time it's ever happened to me, um, I am definitely going to give you my true real opinion on this. I'm not going to sugarcoat it in any way. I'm going to tell you what I honestly thought about the movie. And my honest thought it's about the movie or that it's great. Uh... A, you know that we love Nick Cage. I love and adore Nick Cage. Probably my favorite living actor. Um, and then long after he dies, he'll be my favorite actor ever, living or dead. Uh, we love all aspects of Cage, all eras of Cage. And here it's very cool because we get to see him in a Western. Now, I know that I personally haven't seen him in a Western before. I know he had another movie called The Old Way that recently came out. Haven't gotten to check that one out yet, but it was super cool to see him in a Western. Also because... I freaking love Westerns. There aren't enough Westerns. I'm probably like, I mean, I know I'm an old man, but like I'm probably one of the few people who actually like loves Westerns, wants to watch modern Westerns and always enjoys them. Uh, so Butcher's Crossing was a real treat for me because it combined two favorite things of mine, Nick Cage and Westerns. And just because it's a Western doesn't mean it's like a, sh a pow, pow, shoot em up kind of Western. It's one of those like slow burn oh no, some shit is going to go down in the 1800s Old West kind of Westerns. Like, this is a real ride into hell. You are here with these men, very small cast, uh, but a small group of men who are in the buffalo hunting trade. They go into the wilderness to hunt buffalo and skin them for their hides. And it is not just a trip to hunt the buffalo. It's also a trip, a descent into madness, a trip out of your mind. I do love that psychological aspect, by the way, about this movie, because usually, like I said, you know, Westerns have, there are only so many stories, you know, you can do in a Western, usually the revenge tales, or, you know, kind of home on the range tales, the searchers, that kind of thing. This is very much a psychological slow burn, um, almost like a thriller in a way, because you really do get to see the mental, uh, just the mental shit that these guys have to take and what they go through and, and the changes that inevitably that this life puts on them they are one type of man when they leave and when they come home those that do come home are basically like effed <laughs> i promised you cage talk and now i'm delivering he's awesome in this um this performance is a little more subdued a little more raw grounded emotional um kind of like how he is in pig and in another movie great movie called joe it really reminded me also of that kind of style of movie. Dramatic, grounded, but raw, man. Like, don't, don't think those are soft words. This is a hard movie. And Nick Cage's character plays this guy Miller, who is just this crazy, infamous buffalo hunter, who's sort of like, he's like Ahab in Moby Dick. He just, like, wants one thing, and he'll just, like, he doesn't care who dies if he gets it. Like, he's just going to do it. And doing it means he's skidding a buffalo and ri ripping, it, ripping its, its skin off. It's, it's really disturbing. That's a warning, too, by the way, to animal people. Um, I'm also an animal lover. I'm a cat dad. It, I don't like any kind of animal violence in movies. And this is kind of a tough watch, especially if you're not into seeing animal violence in movies. But it all has a point. Gabe Polsky, the director of the movie, he kind of smartly does it to show you, hey, this is fucked up what happened. <laughs> like, there were six million something bison at one time in the world. And us being human beings, greedy assholes, we went and killed them all so that we could peel their hides off and sell them as like belts and pelts and shit. It just, it's really sad. It's hard to watch, but that's kind of the point. It's not all doom and gloom though. Um, there are some beautiful landscapes. I loved the cinematography in this. You know, it's, it, I think it was shot in Montana actually on a real uh, First Nation um, plot of land, real First Nation territory. Um, and it's gorgeous, man. Just all the sunsets and the trees. This really is one of those movies where you'll be looking at it and like you'll be feeling bad about what's happening, but you're also like, damn, can I vacation there? Can, can I travel there? Now, you might want to travel there today, but you do not want to travel there back when these guys were on the trail because life in the Old West seems like it sucks. God, every Western I see, I'm like, I wouldn't make it five seconds here. There are just some hard-ass scenes. One of my favorite scenes in the movie is when they're traveling. You don't even think about it. This is just something that modern-day people don't think about. These guys are traveling without water, and they come across another wagon party. It's like a family. It's like a mom and her two young kids who are thirsty. They've been on the road for days, no water. And they're like, hey, can we have some water? 
and you start to see the mom pull a gun on them. It's just like desperate times. Like you have to be in like a, a, a fucking holdup with a mom over some water. That's how hard shit was. I, I kind of love that, that atmosphere, that aspect. Like mm, it's a gritty old West. Speaking of old West for my Western fans, if there are Westerns, other Westerns I could compare this to, I would say maybe like Deadwood. Deadwood feels like it has the kind of same grimy, gritty atmosphere. Um, and also something like Bone Tomahawk. I love Bone Tomahawk. And that has that, that's kind of maybe even closer because that's got really grisly violence and so does this. This movie wasn't on my radar before. I mean, I try to do my, my best to keep up with Nick Cage. He's always got so much going on. He's always making so many films. So when this opportunity came up for me to review the movie, I was super psyched about it. As I said, I'm a giant Nick Cage fan, and this film did not disappoint. This is one of the strongest movies I've seen this year. I've never heard of Gabe Polsky before, the writer-director. I believe he co-wrote the script with another writer. But he did write the script, develop it, and direct it. I'm going to say I'm definitely going to be keeping a lookout for what that guy does next. I also want to shout out some other members of the cast. Great supporting cast. Like I said, it's a small cast, but they do a lot with what they got. Uh, Paul Racy from Sound of Metal. That guy pops up. He's awesome. My favorite character in the movie was this guy named uh, Fred Schneider. He's played by an actor I've never seen before called Jeremy Bob. Or, yeah, Jeremy Bob is his name. That guy's great. It's like, okay, Nick Cage is this hardened buffalo hunter, right? Driven, kind of an anti-hero. You sort of don't know what to make of him. Jeremy Bob is the Skinner on his team, and he's just like an antagonistic dick the entire time. He gets some great lines. Even though you kind of hate him, he's one of those characters you love to hate. Also, I have to shout out Xander Berkeley, another great character actor, a guy who you know from a million things. I always think of him as the guy from Heat when Pacino throws him <laughs> out, of his, out of his apartment. He's in it. He plays this drunkard uh, guy, like a Bible thumpy kind of guy. Also, Rachel Keller from Legion, fantastic show. She's in it as well. And I gotta, of course, point out it's a two-hander, and Cage's co-star is Fred Heckinger. Heck, Hetchinger? I'm sorry if I don't, I'm not pronouncing that right. He's the guy from the first season of White Lotus. Fantastic actor, and he has a really interesting character. He puts the events of the movie into motion. He's an Ivy League student. He knows nothing about the world and decides he wants to go out and see, and he's, he's heard, oh, buffalo hunting, it's like the new fad. And he decides it's, a, it's almost like a tour. He's going to like go out with Nick Cage to hunt buffalo, and it winds up ruining his life. <laughs> That guy plays it so straight. It was great to see his slow degradation as a person as well. He like starts all wide-eyed and kind of meek. And then by the end of the movie, you're like, that guy is fucked up. Anyway, awesome film. I can't say enough about it. If you have the opportunity to catch it, do go see it. I don't know if it's out on VOD yet or if it's still in theaters. However you can see this movie, go and see it. Um, it gave me a lot to think about. I think a lot of people are like, this movie is too blah, blah, blah. I think that's the point. It's supposed to make you feel bad about what we did. Um, not in like a sad way. You're not going to leave and be like, what, why, why do I feel? No, like it gives you something to think about, I mean, you know? It's kind of like a, um, it's got a conservationist message, right? It's kind of showing you what we did. Um, it gave me a lot to think about, actually. That's my review of Butcher's Crossing. Thanks again to the studio, Harpoon Productions, for sending us this screener. Do go check it out. Nick Cage, KGX, unite!